Welcome to review lecture number 14. This is part of a series of lectures uh, as a part of my online review course of undergraduate probability and statistics. I'm Chris Mack, your professor, and this is inferences about a variance. Last time we went through a number of ways in which we make inferences about a mean. Um, the other statistic that we very commonly calculate for a sample for an experiment uh, is the variance. And if we report the variance in a, um, a, a uh, paper or a publication, thesis, whatever you might use this number for, you're going to want to report not only the value of the variance, but a confidence interval, or otherwise make some inferences uh, about that variance. So what is the sampling distribution of the variance? We've already discussed this in a prior lecture. If we have uh, n independent and identically distributed random variables, x1 through xn, uh, and we assume that they're all normally distributed, this is going to be a very key assumption. We are not going to calculate in general what the sampling distribution will, of the variance will be. Instead, we'll only look at this one special case. If your variables are not normally distributed, then this analysis won't apply. But if they are normally distributed, then a sample variance can be characterized by a statistic we called chi-square. The degrees of freedom times the sample variance divided by the population variance. And that chi-square is a random variable with a chi-square distribution and a single parameter called the degrees of freedom equal to the sample size minus one. Uh, we saw before some some pictures, some graphs of what that distribution looks like. You see that it's asymmetric. It starts at zero and goes above. Right? You can't have negative degrees of freedom. And it is uh, asymmetric about its mode or mean. The expectation value for chi-square is n minus 1. That basically just says the expectation of, of the sample variance is unbiased. And the variance of chi-square is two times the degrees of freedom. Well, we can use that information to calculate the expectation of the variance itself. And we see the sample variance has an expectation equal to the population variance. So our sample variance is an unbiased estimator. Um, you may recall that our sample variance includes dividing by n minus 1. So we take the sum of the differences with the mean quantity squared, then we divide by n minus 1. That dividing by n minus 1 is required to make the sample variance unbiased, which is why we do it. The variance of the sample variance is 2 times sigma to the fourth, that is the variance squared, divided by n minus 1. And one useful uh, kind of calculation to do uh, in this case is to consider the expectation of the variance divided by the standard deviation of the variance. It's a signal to noise or a relative uh, variance, uh, so to speak. How much signal do we have versus how much noise? And it goes as the square root of n minus 1 over 2. So larger samples give us more signal and less noise. So how do we construct a confidence interval for the variance? Uh, unfortunately, this is rarely done. Students who have to collect experimental data and write up a lab report or, or write up a, a thesis rarely do this. But scientists and engineers who write technical papers that they publish in technical journals often rarely, uh, also rarely do uh, this calculation, and they should. Everyone should calculate the confidence interval for, for a variance if you're reporting the variance as an output of your experiment. So what's the confidence interval for a variance? Uh, the, the true variance, sigma squared, is in the range of a lower bound to an upper bound. And the, the lower bound and upper bound are given by these chi-square values 
at a specific significance level. So if we pick a significance level alpha, then we calculate the chi-square value according to alpha over 2 and 1 minus alpha over 2. Just like we had a, a, a z value at alpha over 2 or a t value for a student's t distribution at a specific alpha over 2 value, specific significance level, here we will also be calculating a chi-square value for this particular significance level. Plug those in once we have our significant level and we have our confidence interval based on the sample variance. Here is a table that shows you uh, what these chi-square values will be for a specific significance level. I'll pick alpha of 0.05. So this would then turn into be a 95% confidence interval. The value of chi-square alpha over 2 or chi-square 1 minus alpha over 2 varies as a function of the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. Here I t tabulate the degrees of freedom divided by chi-square, that is, tabulate this whole term that multiplies the sample variance. Consider a sample size of 11, so that our degrees of freedom is 10. We see that these two numbers are about 0.5 and about 3. In other words, my true variance with 95% confidence is in the range of 0.5 times my sample variance uh, and 3 times my sample variance. Well, if you just think about that for a moment, that's a fairly wide range. Uh, the actual variance goes from 0.5 what I measured to 3 times what I measured. Uh, and then we're 95% confident that the true va variance would fall within that range. Uh, well, what if we had a bigger sample? Uh, you, you know, I need a sample size near 25 before I, I get this, this range down to about 2. That is, uh, it's less than about 2 times what I measured uh, and above about 0.6. And you can see if I have a sample size of about 100, then I'm still... I still have a, a range that's you know on the order of 23% you know, to 35% um, smaller to bigger. It's a fairly wide range. Uh, the variance has a lot of uncertainty. Sample variance has a lot of uncertainty unless the sample sizes get very, very large. Now this is the confidence interval of the variance. If we want to put a confidence interval around the standard deviation, it is a reasonable approximation to simply take the square roots of uh, the confidence interval endpoints for my variance confidence interval. Sometimes we want to compare two sample variances. I have uh, two different treatments, uh, two different experimental uh, procedures, uh, and I want to compare them and ask is the variance uh, of the samples different? If we assume we have normal populations with different means and different variances, and we want to test the hypothesis that the variances are different, we can use an F statistic. An F st statistic is basically the ratio of the two sample variances. And this is a random variable that follows what's called the F distribution. And you can look up tables of the F distribution or uh, spreadsheet programs and other programs have the F distribution built in so you can calculate these statistics and do confidence intervals uh, etc just as we've done before. This by the way is the basis of the statistical test used in ANOVA analysis of variations uh, which we're not going to cover in any depth uh, other than this one slide in this review class. All right, a word of caution. You may have noted that in all of these uh, methods of creating a statistical confidence interval around my sample variance, I had to assume that the underlying population had a normal distribution. There's ways of calculating these uh, confidence intervals for other underlying distributions but I have to know the population distribution to create this confidence interval. There's no equivalent of a central limit theorem that would allow us to 
assume a certain sampling distribution um, independent uh, of this, the population distribution. Here the only way we can create a sampling distribution for the variance is by knowing what the population distribution is. Therefore if you're going to assume that your population is normally distributed you have to check that assumption because it may be wrong and if it's wrong you'll get the wrong answer. Alright, what have we learned in lecture number 14? As always you should be able to quickly and easily answer these questions if not you should go back and review the material again. What is the sampling distribution of the variance? And under what assumptions is this the sampling distribution of the variance? Explain the F statistic and what it is used for. And finally, explain why the statistical tests for variance could easily produce invalid results. Well, that is the end of the set of lectures on sampling distribution, confidence intervals, hypothesis testing, and making inferences. Next, we'll move on to a new topic, and the last major topic of this review course, we're going to start talking about regression. Till then.